Welcome to the show that you want to watch. The show that you must watch. Uh, <laughs> that you must watch. This is a must watch show. Yeah. My name is Andrew Kibe and I'm here with Mahesh Miwa himself, uh, Babu Owino, uh, Member of Parliament, Embakasi East, yeah. if I'm not wrong. Right? Right, right. How big is your con uh, constituency? Uh, my constituency is around... Um, is around... Uh, 676 meter kilometer square. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, square kilometers. 676 square kilometers. And by uh, voters? And uh, voters is around, uh, registered voters are around 160. Oh, that's, that's huge. Huh? And uh, the total population, mm. if you do that by, by three, is approximately around half a million, 500,000. So those are the people who now people who, who say Babu Owino is my MP. They will say TB man. TB man. Yes. Yeah. Man, th thank you very much for honoring my request. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's my pleasure to have you here on the, whatever this is. Uh, it's just basic conversation. Oh, yeah, we yeah. sit and we just chat. And I will tell you the first time that I saw uh, saw you, yeah. I was very annoyed. You pissed me off. Yes. I was watching you on TV. And you were the Sonu chairman at the time. And you brought us all these new words. And I hated you because <laughs> you were so charismatic. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, that should be me, you know. <laughs>
sasa hizi problem zenye zinanisumbua akili sio kuweka nguo kwa kwa mtandao problem yangu kubwa my greatest problem and challenge mm. is to ensure that i change a life for the positive is to ensure that i do that which i must do to change lives for the normal kenyan a kenyan mwenye yule aku kwa ground who lacks school fee because i lacked at some point so i know what it what it is to lack that kenyan that child how can i impact on him but, or her positive Mahesh, how do we know that that is a, a genuine need because we we want we want someone who's passionate like that but how do we identify you guys and say Mahesh is one of them is one of them those who have that genuine one, one thing that yeah. can guarantee you that is uh, by asking any person mm. from Mbakasi East or the Kenyans who have interacted with me or the clear evidence is the re-election every good leader is re-elected mm. every leader who did not deliver nor worked for the constituents is always sent home if even you look at the difference uh, in the number of votes that I got mm. vis-a-vis -vis my opponent 57,000 votes against 27,000 votes tells you clearly that indeed I tried to do something. I'm not the best. I don't want to be the best, but I want to do what I can do. That which I must do to ensure that a woman in Embakasi's constituency, a child in Kenya, at least goes to school. That woman graduates from a mamamboga to owning a kiosk, from a kibanda to a, a supermarket. Mm. That border border rider from a bicycle rider to a border border rider from a border border rider to a matatu driver or owning a matatu. That is the dream that I would want to do and that is what I've been doing in Embakasi East. Why, why, who do you think gave you this burden? I mean, because you've had it for a long time, right? I mean, from you being Sonu chairman, yes. you must have felt that need to serve the people all the time. You know, Kibe, my responsibility, mm. I think, is, uh, is, is a calling from God. Because way, way, way back from when I was in primary school, I was a prefect from class 3, <laughs> 4, <laughs> 5, 6, 7 <laughs> assistant head boy, mm -hmm. class 8 head boy. From 1 to form 4, a prefect throughout, student leader throughout. From 5 and 6, which I did, I got a scholarship to do the Cambridge system. Mm. I was a student leader, the head boy for two terms. Then at the University of Nairobi, I was the longest serving student leader on earth. Served for a record four terms. Mm -hmm. Then, that is as a student leader, the University of Nairobi, and also a student leader for all universities in the country for four terms. Then after that, been uh, elected for two terms. So going with that trajectory, you can easily tell in the next 10 years what I will be keeping. So the writing have, have is on lost? the wall. No. I've contested twice. I've won twice. As a member of parliament. And uh, generally, uh, as things are, 2027, we are also having a dream. 2032, there is a dream. And tell us, tell us that dream. So 2027, uh, what next? So in Bakasi East, you've done as much as you can do for them. Now you need <coughs> bigger guns. But because right now there's still a contract between me and the people of Mbakasi's constituency, I need to stick with that contract. The oral contract that I made with my people, mm. the contract to ensure that there are proper roads in Mbakasi's constituency, mm. the contract to ensure that there is fresh and clean water that is in constant supply in Mbakasi's constituency, the contract to ensure that that child gets bursary and schools are built to transform the lives of my people and to ensure that young men and women get jobs in Embakasi East and in Kenya. That is the contract that I want to stick to. And by 2026, I can assure you that I will come out. I will come out and tell Kenyans that Babu deserve being in this position or this position. As you can see, Kibe, I'm overqualified for any position in this country. If you give me this country as a nation to run it, I will run it with a profit. The profit of changing lives for the better. If you give me a responsibility to be a governor in this Nairobi, it is so easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. If you give me an opportunity to be a senator, 
a member of National Assembly back in Embakasi East constituency. Mm. So I'm overqualified for any position because my mental faculty is upright and can rule, can lead this nation. Did, did, I, did I see somewhere that you're studying for your third uh, master's? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm now doing my third master's and I've been, uh, I'm having my exams in February and that's where I've been... Uh, third master's, out. my guy. Yes, third uh, master's. The, the first two are... There is a, my first, first degree first is actual science, mm -hmm. first class honors, master's in actual science. Th that is important to say first class honors. It's very important because uh, getting first class honors in actual science is something which is almost next to impossible. Okay. Because actual science is the best course in the world. Not mm -hmm. even medicine can close actual science. Not mm -hmm. even medicine, not even engineering, mm -hmm. not even pharmacy. Not even law. Hey, we are sorry. So that is the <laughs> epitome, the fountain yes. of knowledge uh -huh. is actuarial <laughs> science. <laughs> uh -huh. Then after that, master's in actuarial science. Mm -hmm. Then law, LLB law degree, undergrad, mm -hmm. second class upper division. Mm -hmm. And then now, master's in law and master's in economics. That is, that, that is what I'm pursuing as we speak. Economics? Yes. So as things are... Ah, now, and, now and, I can and, see your trajectory. And, and by the way, uh, six diplomas. From where? Six diplomas. When I was doing my A-levels, I did six diplomas. Why? It's just acquisition of knowledge because I'm hungry for knowledge. I'm yearning for knowledge because it is education that's, that transformed me from, from where I was in Nyalenda slums to who I am as a member of parliament. Why not for education? Why it not for education I would have ne never left Nyalenda slums? Why it not for education I would have never come to Nairobi? Kibe, my first time to come to Nairobi and step at ambassador was in 2007. 2007 was my first ever time to cross a road, hmm? to leave Kisumu, to cross a road, to go to another city. My distance was always from Kisumu than being displaced. Let me call it displacement, which is distance with direction. Mm. Back to the village. If I went further, was again from the village to Kisumu. But why it not for education? I would have never come to Nairobi to be a student leader, to study, and to be a member of parliament. So to me, education has always been everything. That's why I'm pursuing education. Secondly, in my family, nobody got an opportunity to be educated. Why? Because there was no money. So we sat with my sister and my brother and myself, and we asked ourselves who should be educated first because of the limited resources. Remember, my mother was selling changa, selling e tot e tot glass ya tequila e e tot glass ni ten bob kwa changa. So uki uza ile five hundred ml ya maji, e only five hundred shillings, and then you mele wesha kijiji nzima, slums nzima wa melewa up iyo day. Because in the moja tu na chiu blackout. So, yapo kuna profit when, kweli. When apale hakuna profit, ile tu ni kuskuma maisha. Na pia makarao pia wanakuja hapo. That's more because, jote yao. Because ni illegal uh, business. Pia unayakea yao hapo. School fee ndi unapata hapo. So because of that limited resource, we could not, my mom was not in a position to educate all of us. Our dad died when I was in class three. So we were not we, we were not in a position to be educated. So you had one bullet to fire. So there was only one. So I, what happened? Mom decided together with our other siblings that, ah, Babu, you can, you can lead the family. I'm the last born in our family. Mm. So I did my best and I said that I would study a degree for everyone in my family, including my relatives. Mm. And that is why I'm doing it. And I'm encouraging those who are coming after me some of my relatives from the extended family, from the nuclear family, also to pursue education. It's never too late. You can do it at whichever age you want to do it. What is education? Because I, I have a... Education mm. is the acquisition of knowledge. So not this and sitting in the class studying, but acquiring knowledge in any which way. Because now you know, you know, uh, we're in 2024, man. You can't tell me that you, you, can you, you want to take us back to class, man. You can sit in class, but even in that class, there's number last. So do we say that that number last is educated if he talks? And, and I think also that even number one in this country was, 
I don't think if he was doing well in class because there's a problem. <laughs> Going by, by, by the type of the cabinet secretaries he's choosing, they're birds of a feather. People with no brains, if you can see clearly, the mental faculty is at zero. <laughs> you see? <laughs> I was trying to be serious here. Man. You see, uh, uh -huh. The intellectual balance is missing. <laughs> uh, those uh -huh. who are sitting in class, getting, sitting in a class for 45 minutes or three hours or two hours is not sufficient evidence of somebody attaining proper education. Because in that class, there's number last. In that class, that person who, start, who started sitting from form one to form four, from first year to fourth year, there are those who do receipts, who will receipt their papers. There are those who never graduate mm. and they've been religiously attending classes. Mm. So is that... So that person education? is not pursuing a, a, a... What did you call it? That's not... Uh, I can't say that those are educated people. So, what, so now, now that me, we know that... To me, and yeah. again, and again, you can sit in class and pass, and you can sit in class and fail, but work hard and eventually pass. So that working hard is what probably is missing in some of us. Okay? Mm -hmm. So education generally is acquisition of knowledge, yearning for knowledge, being hungry for knowledge, wanting to know that which you don't know. That which is new. So how, how do, we do we identify Babu Owinos? Because these are the ones who should be taken to school. Yes. The rest of us idiots are supposed to go and become <laughs> carpenters and everything else. No, right? keep it. But how do we identify? You know, because you know, if for me and you in class, studying the same thing, I'm holding you back. You know, Kibe, not everybody can be a doctor. Not no, everybody can but, be but that point of mine, I have a good point, Babu. Okay. Yeah, it is a good point mm. I'm coming there. Mm. Not everybody can be Babu Owen, yeah. can be a lawyer, can, can be an advocate, but people are talented differently. They are, you can't get the best carpenter. If you get Babu Owino to go to make for you this table, I may not know how to make it, mm. how this person has done it. Mm. This is an educated person. Probably this person, maybe he might have not reached the university level. Mm. He did it as a, a in, at, at the, at the TVET level mm. or uh, trained it somewhere. Mm. Mm. But that person is doing best. Which means that if that person can convert a normal timber, into this finished product. Mm -hmm. If you look at this and this, I can't do this job. Mm -hmm. Which means that this is an educated person. Mm -hmm. This is a person who knows their shape. So the definition of education in Africa is not what you're saying. Because the definition of education, I must show you my papers. No. Right? But now you're telling us, because people have been running away. These papers, you saw them, even, even Sakaja got some from Uganda <laughs> here, <laughs> from teams. <laughs> These papers you can get from anywhere. They are everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's just a paper <laughs> that is printed. That's all. But the real you, know, you don't believe Sakaja's papers real, were legit? That's an academic dwarf. The real education is here. Okay. We can't talk about Sakaja here. This is high high octane <laughs> conversation. No, you don't, you don't, you don't reduce it. You are reducing it. Uh, I, 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 I have other good knowledge. Continue. Eh? You see, you can get you can get an artist who is talented, who knows his stuff, mm. but without the knowledge of the artistry in it, without that knowledge, that person can't do anything. Okay? Which means that person has knowledge about what they are doing. Has the talent and the knowledge about what they are doing. I'm not restricting education to purely just opening books and books and books. Education come in different forms. So who, who, what do you think about our, our education minister now? Uh, for the respect of for the minister, I won't, uh, I won't uh, really go deep into it because the son was my lecturer at the University of Nairobi mm -hmm. and uh, because he was also my friend and my lecturer, I'd, I wouldn't want to go into that, but I would hit the president instead of uh, the minister. Okay. Look at what uh, Professor George Albert Omore Magoa did mm -hmm. in the education industry. How he transformed the education. Do you want to tell me, Kibi, that that hard work that Magoa toiled and moiled for and transforming the industry, the education industry, that hard work that Kibaki did in ensuring that at least there's, a, there's, there's, there's an institution 
of higher learning in every county or region. That hard work that Uru put in Magoa, you want to tell me that that hard work, Ruto multiplied that hard work by zero. Even marking KCPE, Kibe, we can't mark KCPE, honestly speaking, as a nation. We are producing errors instead of putting uh, science subject or Kiswahili subject, you put sign language, where that school is not doing that sign language. You put uh, mathematics or science, everybody has scored 75%. Honestly speaking, we can't mark simple paper. Then we go to KCSE, mm, Kibe. Mm. We go to KCSE, KCSE. We take so much time saying that we were preparing to release the best results. Then when you release the results, last year alone, we admitted 565,000 students in various universities. This year, we, ad we are admitting 201,000 students. What does this tell you? Only 22% of the students who sat for exams, over 864,000 students who sat for exams, only 200,000 are going to be admitted to pursue education in, in institutions of higher learning. What about the 78%? Where are we taking them? Why are we destroying them? Just because the government wanted to save capitation of 67 billion Kenya shillings. Therefore, they regulate the results. If you get uh, uh, a C plus, they return you to a C or a C minor, so that you don't join. This was the most unfair thing we are doing to our children, because Kibe, in the institution of economics... Is, is this intentional, or is just... This is intentional, because the government wanted to control. You can't tell me that if in the previous four years, we've been admitting over 500,000 to universities, and now, all of a sudden, in 2023, we are going to admit, in 2024, we are going to admit only 201,000 students. What does this tell you? The role of education in economics. The role of education in economics is the central key factor to be considered because we know the role of education in health, in pro the role of health in, 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 in our economy. Okay? Education provides skills into the economy. For you to do agriculture in the village, you need education. You need to know in what ratio are you going to put the fertilizer. You need to know what type of irrigation you are going to do. You need to know what type of soil erosion takes place in that area, be it sprinkle uh, type of irrigation, or, uh, or uh, there's a splash erosion, there's whatever, how you are going to build the gabions when it comes to matters soil erosion. That is education skills. When it comes to health, if you go to the hospital, utapewa panadol ngapi na piriton ngapi. Ama tumbo ikiuma, utapewa flagil ngapi. We know if a mother is delivering in the hospital, the technology that has been uh, devised, if you want to go the natural way or the CS way, we know the role of education in, in, in health, the role of education in agriculture, the role of education in the service industry, where we have the hotel industry, we have the banking industry, the insurance industry. We know the role of education is everything in the economy of a nation. Then you intentionally look at the role of uh, education in the, in the art industry. Look at uh, these other jobs like carpentry, the skills, matter skills, electricians, plumbers, carpentry. Without them, we can't live. Look at the affordable housing that Ruto is talking about. He's thinking that everybody can go and carry the stones to build a house. That is a person who is not okay in his, in, in, in his, uh, in his mind. Look at the role of education in so, our so economy. You, so, for, generally, uh, so generally, my brother, I'm a sad person because this government... But, you, but you're, 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 you're connecting too many, too many things to, you know, at the same time. No? You see, I'm, I'm trying to tell you uh. that this education is applied everywhere in everything. So are we failing with our education we right are, now? We are failing... Big time we are Why? failing. So our education is not up to par we, or aren't we giving enough people the opportunity to get educated? Kibe, the president came up with an opportunity that only 45,000 students will be given help. Those who are supposed to go to the university now are 200,000. Mm -hmm. Out of that, 864,000 did their exams and are supposed to be admitted. There should be that 100% transition from secondary to universities or colleges. Because those who did not qualify to go to universities should do other things. 
they should do diploma courses, certificate diplomas, they can do matter skills, okay? Carpenters, carpentry, plumbing, electricians. Let me tell you one thing, Kibi. The president said that there will be no help. Help has been of benefit. If you look at these slums, go back to the village. Right now, he's saying that in the cheapest degree course, a parent will have to part with 300,000 Kenya shillings for you to do an arts course. For medical course, you will have to do 600,000 Kenya shillings. Now, let's take Mama Mboga, Kibe, who is selling Mboga, okay? Or a person who is going from Django on a daily basis and earn 600 shillings per day. 600 shillings per day for you to do Django in a month is 600 times 30 days. That is 180. That is 18,000 Kenya shillings in a month. That is if you go even now, on Sunday. Now you are working Monday to Sunday, yeah. Monday to mm -hmm. Sunday for 30 days mm -hmm. without relaxing. Is 18,000 Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. In a year is 18,000 times 12, which is 216,000 Kenya mm -hmm. shillings. So in one year, you have 216,000, you are not resting. You want to buy food, you want to pay rent, then you want to pay school fees. Then you have more than two kids. First of all, one kid is not sufficient to take to the university. Why? Because 216 is not yet enough. Because you need at least 300,000 Kenya shillings. So what does it tell you? That if you have more than two kids, then you will have to decide on who is to go to school and who is not to go to school. That one, the president has failed completely. He should leave help as it was. Help was paying for any student that was called to the university. The government must take care of that person. Then number two. You are bringing in the idea that uh, probably you are talking about the housing when you are saying that probably you, don't, you are not for that idea, that I'm not for the idea of the affordable housing. No, I was just asking, are, are you for the idea? I'm not for the idea. Why not? This is why I'm not for the idea. Housing is a private good. The role of the government is not to provide private goods to the citizens, but to provide an enabling environment for the citizens to come up with the private goods, to enjoy the private goods. Why should the government build you a house? I mean, what, is the, what is the interest behind it? And number one, we are 55 million Kenyans. But, but Babu, is, is it the same thing when, when, you, when you go for help? Let me, let me tell you something. Because help, help, why should the government give these guys who've qualified to go to... Me, if I get my D, I'm not getting help. You get your B, you're getting help. Why are you getting help and I'm not getting it? Let me the same way that the affordable housing is going to be given to the people help, who cannot afford the time, to buy the, the houses. By the time Uhuru was leaving, mm. help had, had been expanded to even the private students mm. in other colleges. Mm -hmm. But now, Ruta has done away with it. So back to the affordable housing. Mm. There is no way you can fulfill construction of 55 million units for 55 million Kenyans. What will happen, Kibe, in my slums in Nyalenda, if they hear that in Nairobi there are houses which are being given to Nairobians. They will move from Nyalenda to Nairobi. The president told us that his intention is to kill slums, to destroy slums, and at least bring up houses that are not, that are going to be okay. Mm. But in essence, in economics, you are going to create what we call the dual economy, where there will be rural urban migration. Mm -hmm. People will be migrating from the rural areas to the urban areas, knowing that they will be given houses when they reach urban centers in Nairobi, they realize that they can't even afford that house that you are supposed to get. You are told that the deposit to pay for you to get a two-bedroom is 300,000 Kenya shillings. How will a border border rider get that 300,000 Kenya shillings? And you need to pay rent where you are staying, you need to pay school fees, you need to pay other bills, you need to buy food. Number two, the moment people move to the urban centers to wait for houses, they will be sprouting up of more slums. And with more slums, there will be serious insecurity in urban centers. With insecurity, you know what, how that is detrimental to our economy. So generally, my brother Kibe, the president either in his wisdom or lack of the same, he doesn't know what he's doing. Because clearly, you cannot tell people that you can give people houses and Remember, everybody is paying for the house, uh, uh, the housing levy. So, so let me. So you, I want you to think like him. Yes. Why would he do this? 
T tell me now, he's, the, he's just gotten the presidency and then he sits and decides, you know what, I have to give these guys this, this and this. What, what's going on in your I mind? I think this is a scheme uh, to make money in terms of importation of raw materials because, again, whatever we are using to construct these houses are imported, even cement. We were constructing the standard gauge railway here the other day. We were even importing human labor. The Chinese were working in Kenya instead of giving serious Kenyans jobs here to weld, mm. to do welding, to get raw materials from here. Cement, why should we import cement if we can manufacture cement in Kenya? Now, how do these people make money? The dollar now is going high, right? Mm -hmm. The dollar is raised. The moment you do importation, you will pay using dollars. Mm. The moment you pay using dollars, that money leaks into other economies in other countries. Then that is where they get the kickbacks. They say, if I supply this material X, mine is 10, 20 percent. They're getting kickbacks in dollars. In dollars. And you see, that is why our dollar cannot stabilize now. It will stabilize at 200, according to my pre prediction as an actuary. Mm. It is going to be at 200. That is where we are going to attain the equilibrium. But all in all, Kibe, housing, the president, number one, is not managing this country well. He knew how to win this presidency because the end justifies the means. Mm -hmm. He had already won it. He's the one who's serving as the president. He had already done, he did what he did. So to us as politicians, the end justifies the means. Mm -hmm. But now he doesn't know how to manage. So he's a good politician, but a poor manager. He knows nothing about management. And that's why he, he appointed uh, cabinet secretaries who are very, 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 very ineffective. I mean, like, but Moses Kuri is a brilliant man. Come on. Save for people like Moses Kuri. Mm. But look at 90% of that cabinet. Look at uh, my, my great friend and my, my lecturer, my former lecturer, Professor Kindiki. Kindiki yeah. Look at that gentleman. He's being wasted in, in, in interior. Where should he be? Yeah. He's interior, but people are bombing, uh, are, are <laughs> shooting people in Baringo, the next, the, next, the next village. People are being mm -hmm. killed. Mm -hmm. We need somebody with megalomania and valor in that in that in that in that uh, position. In that position, so Kindiki could do better as a minister for education mm -hmm. or tourism or even uh, or even this one that Mudava is owning. I don't even know the names of these foreign ministers affairs. because foreign affairs because these people are clueless. You see, who do rather uh, Raila? I'm sorry, who to put there? You know. Security is a going concern. Mm -hmm. And for you to, to be a person who can perform that role well, give it to somebody like Matiani, give it to somebody like Michuki. Look at how different they were from Professor. Professor is very intellectual, which is good, because security, you need both, both intellectual acumen mm -hmm. and also you need that, that aura, mm -hmm. that people, you need to be, <laughs> to be loved and... <laughs> And the fear, and fear the equal measure. measure. Yes, 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 yes. Because there, there was that, that, there was that aura about Matiang. You yes. felt like he could just call Chinkoro any time on you, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, give, give me a name. Who would you rather we replace? You know, Kindiki with. You know, there, there. Are, you know, Kenya. We have fifty-five million Kenyans. Oh, but, yeah, want, but but Nani, Ruto, want... Ruto has to pick somebody who is his buddy. But you see. No, it's not about his body. That is now the problem we come in. In Kenya, there are two greatest problems we are, we are facing. One is corruption, okay, from the top leadership. Number two is what we call the patrim pat pat patrimonialism, where you, you favor your people, you hold yourself as a king, and you need to be served, and people think that they, that they, that, that, that they deserve getting what they have by appointing, at, uh, appointing the useless ministers in these positions, and then they think that they are owed by the president. You see, that is a big problem because you will always do something to please these keys to power. And these keys to power that you are pleasing, they don't add any value. They don't have add any value. So in appointment of an interior cabinet secretary, uh, it is not my role as a person in opposition. The more mistakes he makes, the better for me. But it is too sad for Kenyans. And for that matter, under the doctrine of separation of powers, checks and balances, we must keep him on check so that Kenyans get what they deserve. So, in this case, we're talking about the president. Yes. So he knows, he knows what he should do. 
So which means if you take somebody who is not delivering in that ministry and cannot change them, which means that he's himself designing this system to fail. Don't you think he's dealing with an impossible group of people to please because of all the MOUs and agreements he had before he got into power? You know, a leader should not overpromise. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kibe, too much ambition destroys a man. However, too little takes him nowhere. As a, as a leader, he ought not to have been of ambitious to want to be the president if he knew that he was not going to deliver in that. The moment you get into presidency, you know. You know what you should do. You should not be told what to do because you are the leader, you are the boss. You need to know. You need to lead. You need not to rule. And in this situation, what is happening in our country is that as a president, mm. He won elections, whether fraudulently or not fraudulently, is there as the president. But the problem is management is a problem. If he knows that he has so many promises that he made, first of all, why would you make those promises as a leader? A leader is known by his word. Your word is your bond. Therefore, you should be tied by your word. And you should not be known to be a leader who lies. And he can as well lie to those people because if he's lying to Kenyans, he should lie to those people that he promised. There is no problem, there are few. But those people should not hold him hostage. I had, I had that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so, do you ever have like a, a time when you, you shared this persona or is this really you? Are you like <laughs> this 100% of the time? How am because, I? Because, because, uh, <laughs> How am I? Maybe if I ask from that. Yeah, because, because now, if you think about you telling me you've been um, a prefect all those years, that you graduated, you did this, you're here, <laughs> you know. So, did you create this Babu Will in class three and say, this is a guy that is going to run this ship? <laughs> yeah? You know, Kibe, let me take you back to the Bible. Yeah. In Jeremiah 29, 11, mm. the Bible says, the Almighty God told Jeremiah mm. that I knew you. I knew you before, before you were born. born and yes. I knew you in your mother's womb. Mm. And I had plans for you. Plans to make you prosper and not to destroy you. So, all in all, the Babuino brand is a brand that came right from the Almighty God. And I know it is only God who can stop it. So it is not something that is just even within me. I have no control over it. It is the Almighty God that knows who Baboino is and knows the next step that I'm going to be at. Do you really believe that? I believe that 101 mm. percent. Yes. Have you aged in the last couple of years? Do, do, do you feel like you, you've you've have you've had to age very fast being uh, now in active politics? You know, it's what I wanted to do because uh, Kibe, when I was living in Alenda slums, I used to pray to God that the day that you remove me from this lifestyle from this lamps mm. I will work for you then keep I have no option I have to work it is the calling it is what I wanted to do mm. the moment the Almighty God removed me from slums to, to, to being a member of Parliament I owe him I just have to work for the people leadership is about others it is not about me I have to work for people so no matter what I will do no matter the steps that I'll take no matter what I will go through I will have to go through it for the sake of the people, for the sake of the children of the Almighty God. So when you're standing on the podium, when you're standing there and Baba is behind you, and you're saying all these things, <laughs> do you mean them? Or are you just in the moment? Do you mean all this shit that you say? Because you get, you get us worked up and we're like, ah, yeah, yeah, now we're going to the streets, we're going to kill everybody. Or okay, not kill, you, you, you've never told us to kill anybody. Yeah. But you, you get us there, you get us oh, close to the edge. And uh, you, you give us that vibe, so... You know, Kibe, uh, people have challenges, serious challenges in this nation. People have problems. People can't afford fees. People can't afford to put food on their table. At least even one meal. People live below a dollar. Half a dollar now. People are struggling. There are so many challenges. A normal Kenyan, a normal youth would want to die. Would want to commit suicide. But they don't, they don't even have money to buy a rope to hang themselves. They can't die because they don't have that money to go and buy a rope to hang themselves. 
Kibe, that is the desperation that we are at because of poor leadership. And if we could make it right at the ballot, Kibe, I can promise you today that the challenges that we experience today is because of the problems that we put ourselves into by electing leaders who don't have our personal interest at heart. And let me tell you, the moment I'm there on the podium as a leader, I've been arrested myself. I've gone to the prison. I've been, actually, I'm, I'm the only member of parliament since independence that has had so many cases, both criminal and civil cases combined, mm -hmm. from the states and even some personal. But all in all, I'm not complaining because as a leader, my sole responsibility is to ensure that the, my neighbor, my friend, that person that I'm attached to, that person that I'm supposed to work for, at least get the services. But, but Babu, you talk about the deserve. You, you talk about elections, like you guys didn't have the chance to be leaders. You know, now you're putting the blame on us, telling us if we had elected. <laughs> but, but Baba had Uhuru by his side. You guys fumbled. <laughs> you guys had the country and you fumbled. So shouldn't we look at you and say you guys are the you're not as good a manager as Act Ruto because Act Ruto Act managed to get what he wanted. Why didn't you guys do it? You, you know, you know, even in the Bible, even in the Bible, this idea of uh, con men started long ago. Uh -huh. when, <laughs> when Jacob conned Esau of his blessings. You remember? <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can just be conniving and you connive your way into it. But, but, when but, you but get there, by any means necessary. But, but, but when you get there, by any means necessary, yeah. when you get there, there's nothing you are, do, you are doing as a leader, as we can see. Actually, it's past one year and there's nothing so serious that we can see. And going back to the elections. But at least Unga went down. You guys, did, yes. you guys didn't mention that one, did you? Kibe, let me tell you something. Uh. The real unga, mm. leave alone this unga that they imported the other flour from other countries. I mean, Ruto has a farm in, uh, in Malawi and in DRC Congo, planting maize. Yeah. If he's selling to Kenyans at a throwaway price, he will just reduce the prices of unga. So there's no problem with that. Yeah. But generally, the unga, the real unga on the shelf, look at the price, it's not yet reduced. There is no way we, they will reduce the cost of unga if the cost of production is still high. I mean, if but if I go to the increase, supermarket today, I'll find that unga for uh, 180. Kibe, I don't think so. Let me tell you the truth. Babu, you know, it's a long me, time since you, you did your own shopping. You know, now you're me, Amhej, the because people because who do shit for you. Unga yaku siaga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unga yangu. You know, I don't need to go to the supermarket to buy unga kibe. If, oh, if, if I can eat that unga in Nasiago. No, but Unasiaga. Hata juzi ni metoka ushago ni merudi na guni ya moja ya unga iko kwa nyumba pali. Unaona? Hiyo uh -huh. guni ya moja imesiagwa vizuri. But that is what a normal Kenyan is going through. Because I also want to see, that is where I was from. And that is where I don't need to change my lifestyle so much. Once in a while, lapa na pale na ingia, natuma wife, anaenda supa, na nunua unga wapa na pale. Pia nataka ni test pia hiyo kidogo, tumbo ikianza kukua ngumu kidogo. Nina, nina mix mix up and up and mm. But all in all, looking at the prices of ungas, there is no way price of unga can go down if the cost of production is high. And what leads to the cost of production is the increment of the fuel uh, taxes. The moment you increase fuel, you will increase the cost of production at the farm. Because fertilizer for you to transport, you will have to use fuel. You will have to use a, a, a car. And that car is fuel, and that fuel, the cost is high. Therefore, for you to achieve that cost of transport that you put on the fertilizer, which was high because of high fuel, you will put it on the maindi, the final product. For you to go and do farming, you will have to, the, those tractors use diesel. So for you to achieve that, you will have to put it back on the cost of maindi, the final product. Therefore, if the cost of production is high, you will never reduce the price of unga. Well, and in addition to that, uh, what you import, because Kenya, Kenya consumes 80% of imported goods, okay? The dollar is high now. Those imported goods are bought expensively. When they are being sold here, which is serious absorption in economics, when they are being sold here in Kenya, they will be sold at higher prices. Therefore, all in all, they won't reduce that. So it's just a PR here and there. You remember there was an interview <laughs> in Citizen when... Uh, one of the cabinet secretaries said that the unga has been reduced. It forced that journalist to... Apparently there was one in Eldoret in a supermarket and saying that unga has not been reduced. 
So all in all, the cost of living, what we are crying about here is the cost of living. And Unga also represents, it's part of the cost of living. Everything is high. Everything is high. To electricity, size kibe, atuna steamer. But but um say and I say ma zile do zile chukli wana mudosi we excuse me and I say ma your previous boss your you previous me. boss fucked up so badly left such a big debt that now these guys have a hard to first fill that hole and then now we can start to come out of it right it, now, where, where is the truth in that right now our mm. debt is standing at eleven trillion mm. at eleven trillion. The, the foreign debt is around 5 trillion, is around 5.8 to 6 trillion. The domestic uh, 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 debt is around 5 trillion. Okay? Mm. So approximately, we have around 11 trillion. In one year, in office, Ruto has taken a debt of 2.6 trillion Kenya shillings. That is only a quarter of what Uru took in his first term as a president of the Republic of Kenya. In his first term, the current president was a deputy president in 2013 to 2017. Mm. When decisions are being made, are made in the cabinet, where he was sitting, part of the decision makers, the allegations of corruptions to a tune of billions and billions from Aurora and Kimwarer dams, which, were just, which just disappeared to Eurobond, which are allegedly the president's name was mentioned mm. in those scandals. So, during that period, he was a main factor in it, a main beneficiary in it. Why should he cry now that the previous boss took the money? While he was serving as the second in command, he didn't come out to talk about it as at that time. Why didn't he? He should have come out to talk about it. So right now, because they don't know how to manage, we keep on blaming others. You cannot blame people forever. The country you've been given, why do you blame your people? If you are not ready, resign. Me but, but today, how, if you put how, me in the state house there, I can deliver. But, but even you, when you're given a loan by the bank, they give you some time for you to fix, you know, to, to use the money up and to, you know, start getting it together. So even, how much time do you think, maybe half the time, he needs half the time for him to start now turning you, over you, a profit. You know, Kibe, because Kenya is a company, right? You know, Kibe, mm. taking a loan is not a problem, has never been a problem. Why? Because there is a great economist in history called Franco Modigliani, an Italian-American economist. Mm. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Franco Modigliani mm. came up with a theory called the life cycle hypothesis, where he told us, that you can enjoy what you ought to have enjoyed mm -hmm. in 70 years time you can enjoy it now and then repay for it, repay it mm -hmm. as you approach your 70 years that is the origin of the mortgage system the origin of the loan system that taking a loan is not a problem but you can't take loan to pilfer to defraud to steal to misappropriate you can't take loans for corruption you can't take loans for patrimonialism where you want to favor your people. You can't take loan for recurrent expenditures. Expenditure. You must take loan for development. So this money for development is what they borrow, they steal. You steal your own money. <laughs> You're the president. You've appointed everybody to work for you. Then you borrow money and then they steal. Is that really something that we should... We should not talk about just because uh, 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 time should be given for the repayment of the loans. So, do you know him personally? I know him personally. I know him personally. I know him in person. Actually, uh, his son, Nick. Mm. Nick, I can tell you, is a very good friend of mine and a close friend of mine. But you see, now we are talking leadership. We are talking leadership. You guys are able to separate politics. the two? Uh, right now, because I mean, if if you're really passionate about it, right then now, it must there, mean a, a lot right more now, than just. Right now, we are not too close because of uh, what has been happening. Because my my intention is to deliver for my people, and if uh, the president cannot deliver, then I have no business being close to the president. So generally, it doesn't matter. And you see, the president should not go around threatening people. When Kibe will not die, we are going to all die. There's something called momentum mode in. 
in Spanish that eventually you will die. Mm -hmm. So let's say that uh, nowadays uh, uh, the mortality rate is around 65%. If you live beyond 65%, if you reach even 90, 90 years, 95 years, you are sure you are dying. Yes. So if you die now, what is the difference between dying now and dying then? It's death. It doesn't matter. No, but he has not threatened anybody. The president said that he has, the, there are only three options available. Moja ni kuenda bikupeleka watu binguni. He was threatening people left, right and center. Right now he's threatening people that he will deal with people who are taking him to court. It doesn't matter, bro. Jomo Kenyatta was there, he died. Moi came, ruled for 24 years, he died. So he the, came, uh, ruled for you, 10 years, he died. But have, do you agree with him on anything? You know, there must be at least one thing you can but say. But at least yeah. there's one thing I agree with him mm. about lying. That is always right about lying. If Ruto tells you left, <laughs> follow right. You know that right is the correct route. Okay? Uh, so, and and, and what, what, did Nani, what did Uhuru tell you that day? He almost slapped you. Uh, you were not a member of parliament then. I think, I don't know. You I had was a student leader. You had really rattled him. Yeah, but you see, Obama was coming to Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, Uhuru is a was the president of the Republic of Kenya. Mm -hmm. I was the president of the students' organization of, uh, of, of Nairobi University. Mm -hmm. So if a president of America is coming, why shouldn't that president see the president of Son? Hey! Of organization uh -huh. of Nairobi University. Uh -huh. So he saw me. By the end of the day, we got what we wanted. You forced yourself it. there? Yes, I, was in, I, was, I went to State House and the three presidents met. Hey. President Babu Owino, Son, so do, and Obama. President Uhuru Kenya, and President America, Obama. Why should President come and not see me? So, so wait, so how did you execute that? <laughs> you know... Be because we saw him, see you, he, he looks at you, and then he said, where, well, well, I don't know what he said to you. You know me, I wrote a letter to Obama, and said that if you won't see me as the president of the... Uh, student organization of Nairobi uh, University uh, and Kenya <laughs> University Students Organization, uh, then you will not pass Uru Highway. <laughs> Uru, do you go back to America. Come when you, you plan to see me. Yes. Why not see me? You as wrote a, a letter. Student leader. Do you know what it is to be a student leader? A student, a leader of all engineers, all doctors, all lawyers, all actuaries, all, all, all teachers, economists. All economists. My friend, what else do you want to be? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so you wrote a letter? I wrote a letter. And who did you send it to? Because uh, you, which address? Uh, um, embassy. Embassy in America. Also, oh, you sent it to the embassy here? Yes. Where they know who you are? Yes. Ah. And information in Lifikia Obama. And Obama said, I was sent, they responded to my letter and said that Babu must be in that meeting in State House for the dinner. And I went there and we talked. Did you guys, uh, you know, quash the beef with uh, Hune? Well, that was it. What we saw is what I, we saw. I don't think if there is any beef between me and, uh, and uh, former president Uhuru Kenyatta. And by the way, I respect Uhuru's brains. That is a serious politician, let me tell you so. Is he? Hey! Uhuru is a serious politician. Uhuru, for him to go to Nigeria and make Tinubu the president, he went to Congo and make, made she, she, uh, Felix Shekedi the president. Mm. And he had made Ruto the president. I mean, that guy is a genius. You've been insisting that on that is story. A man by you, you, you've been insisting. Politics. No, 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 no. Don't, don't rush through that one. Yes. I've been seeing you rushing <laughs> through. <laughs> uh, give me that one of who made Ruto the president. You know, Kibe, look at the three arms uh, of government the executive headed by the president who has the weapons okay he has all everything that Ruto keeps telling us that he has that he that he's got a sword and he can chop off anybody's head mm. anytime mm. okay he has military the police and all those tools of trade so therefore he enjoys mon monopoly of violence. Do you know the definition of a state as per the <laughs> Montevideo conference? Hey, Buddha. Uh, wh where Montevideo do you keep all this information? Just the capital city of uh, 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 Uruguay. Sorry. Yeah? Uh -huh. As per the Montevideo <laughs> conference, the definition of a state is that it must have a definite population, mm -hmm. 
must have a definite ter uh, ter territory and then <laughs> monopolize violence, that the state is the most violent and they've legitimized, mm. legalized mm. violence because they have all the tools for violence. That is what Uru had <laughs> in 2022. Mm. Okay? Then, in parliament, we had Speaker Justin Muturi. Who was still on the Uru side. Who left us and joined Ruto, but must have left with instructions, of course. Then the judiciary, we ought to have Justice Ouko was, was the most qualified to be the Chief Justice. Mm. If we were to get this, why wouldn't Justice Ouko be given that Chief Justice? Why was it left to Koome? You remember the meeting that uh, Justice Koome did online? Mm. <laughs> Eh? that they did a meeting online to pass it was nonsense at night 8 p.m eh? I mean, but in uru's government but that co is the person co COVID we were is giving, COVID, my guy that is no it wasn't during covid that is the person we were giving the chief justice mm. to protect us and you see we were screwed up in the supreme court leave that aside so then now you're the president you have Matiangi and the way you knew Matiangi and the way you know Matiangi. Yeah. Then, mm. you're being told that your candidate is beaten by 200,000 votes. Why couldn't we just take Chebukati, hide him somewhere and tell him, announce these results? Just hide him somewhere. Now, I'm finna kidogo na ambia, announce. Announce these so, so, results. So, my, my point is, so why didn't you guys that do that? That was the easiest thing to do, but because the president... No, what what I'm going to do with you, because us guys were looking at you. Bro, I remember watching the elections, and I'm looking and I'm saying, these guys have fumbled this thing again. That thing because if there was a time even to steal, this would have been the time for you guys to you know, steal our, and get away with it. Our hopes We would were, have been, okay, we would have been, ah, Raila finally has done what he has done. Nobody is taking that away from him. Our hopes were all in the state, what we call the deep state. They messed us up. Is something that personally I went to 280 constituencies out of 290 campaigning for a change, a better change. But don't worry, my brother. Kenyans are sniffing the blood of revolution as we speak now. You think that's possible? It is possible. What type of revolution? Joking, joking with a hungry man is not. That one. But that what, one, what type of revolution on, on is, Twitter? Is, that one is better imagined than experienced. So I won't explain it here. Oh, come on. Kenyans don't have that appetite. <laughs> <laughs> Babu Kenyans don't have that appetite. Since you by lunchtime, to go to Njaa, to not have to do that. My brother, this is what you have to do. Mmm, because you have to do that. We just like to pretend that there is no food out uh, no, anywhere. By the way, Kibe, as things are, things are fake. What one is Shida? People have Akinana. challenges. Akinana. People have challenges. As a leader, I get phone calls on a daily basis. I, people, I know what people are going through. Apa inje, ingia apa kwa slums, ingia kwa easy villages. There's a problem. The other day we were told that 300,000 students haven't reported to high school. There should be full transition. That means that they can't afford even a uh, uniform for their children. They can't afford books. They can't get school fees. 300,000 was reported. They can't go to school because there's no money. There's no, no, because job. it's not important enough, Babu. It is important. If it was important means, enough... Then we would find a way. The same way today, if you hear some one of your constituents has gotten a visa to go to America, there is nothing in this world that will stop a Kenyan from going to America when they have a visa. True, not true. But what Babu, are you going Babu, to do? Babu, if today I came yes. and produced my passport and I tell you I'm your constituent and this is a visa to America, you will do whatever it takes. But you see, Kibe, right? because everybody to, will do whatever it takes, because you, you know that, America, that opportunity is yes. a better opportunity than this one. You are right yeah. now. You are right. Because there's a better opportunity in America, mm. and there's no better opportunity in Kenya. That now, is why so, so maybe even the education is look, the same, because look, we're looking at the education, and the parents are saying, it's not as valuable as maybe it used to be. That's why I'm not going to go sacrifice and sell my cow, my goat, or mm. get a loan from the circle, whatever needs to happen. Because this personal responsibility about you know, Kibe. Yeah. So a, where, where, where are the parents of these kids who are suffering? There's a big problem. You know, if you are on the ground, if you get to feel what those people are going through, they are victims of circumstances. There are no jobs. Genuinely speaking, there are no jobs and there are businesses. Some who have businesses, they are doing bad. 
look at the look at the look at the central bank rates right now they've been raised high that means that goods and services are automatically going to go high and demand is going to be low so, but but to oversimplify this a person on the ground they have no jobs and if they have jobs it's just hand to mouth ukienda mjengo ujenge hiyo hiyo affordable housing ya ruto umekaa hapo from 6 am to 6 pm ni unapewa 600 shillings kama mtu wa mkono kama we ni fundi unapewa 1300 shillings in a day then you have to use transport urudi where you are coming from morning and evening hiyo so mbili already meenda lazima upeleke food nyumbani lazima there are other things that you are going to do so by the end of the day you can accumulate this money but itakuwa sufficient for you to take care of school fees They, let me tell you so one thing what, what, what do you want like us to do now just like your parent, wewe, wewe, make it how do we help just you just like your parent eh. and my parent mm. just like they longed for us to go to school even if mine didn't go to school but she still ensured that at least let me do whatever i can do for my son to go to school is the same way that parent in the slum is struggling and saying that whatever it takes i want to take it i want to do it there is no parent in the slum there is no parent in the village there is no parent anywhere no matter how poor education is the quality of education is no matter what level it is would want the child just to finish class 8 and stay at home they would want the child to advance and get that which they can get but all in all because of those challenges that we experience on the ground people can't get fees now people can't afford and now people can't go to school it is not about the quality of education that is a separate matter and even if it is about quality of education we introduced cbc the other day here in cbc look at how confused the government is kibe a normal teacher is trained to take a maximum of two subjects when they are teaching mm. you go to these primary schools class grade 7 and grade 8 one teacher is teaching 10 subjects 10 subjects well, for you to teach 10 subjects you need 10 hours to prepare right mm. at least one hour per subject because you are going to to teach for around 45 to 1 hour minutes okay 60 minutes 45 to 60 minutes so 10 hours what time are you going to finish your lesson in school you leave at around 5 pm you go back home you have a family to take care of and other things to do what time will you prepare to go and deliver that therefore we introduced the cbc without proper infrastructure in place and those teachers that we introduced in cbc we also don't pay them the junior secondary school teachers they are not also being confirmed they are told that they are still interns an intern is earning 18000 kenya shillings 18000 kenya shillings when you tax it you will get around 13 to 12000 kenya shillings in a month even fair aitoshi fair peke yake ya kutoka kwako to a school is not sufficient within a month for that period so therefore you also need to pay rent pia umeweka hapa lazima ununue affordable housing utatoa pesa wapi what quality education will you give as a teacher so all in all the system is messed up from the top the a fish rots from the head so you say a revolution would solve this very important and urgent no kibe mm. <laughs> 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 people people have serious challenges I, I, serious problems babu don't tell me we are there Don't, don't don't tell me that you, you can see a revolution people have problems and uh, what I, what i'm trying to say in simple words is that people are suffering and if a person is suffering they have nothing more to lose the only thing to lose are the chains that are tied on them because after all they are going to die of hunger so what will happen next they are the ones who know they are the ones who know because but they're not all somebody, dying at the same time But you see mm. they don't have to drop and die at the same time. But what they go through those psychological tortures they are even killing their generations and other children but, 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 are, and other children that are coming up and you see a bringing to a child is very important when a, a parent is 24 hours 24/7 stressed up is depressed can't even talk to you because they are going to get food for you they they don't have even time for you as a child this child is coming up as a as a child who's toughened by life and has a lot of uh, uh, chaos in the mind and there's a lot going on and and a lot of paranoia and type such type of children turn out uh, to be something different kid but who's going to lead that revolution ba- ba- baba looks like he's he's now going into retirement proper 
Baba is still is it, is, a, is it going to be you, Baba? Baba is still a strong leader, hmm. and whenever Baba is as my boss, he still makes decisions. He's still my leader. I am I'm still under him. He's my boss, and whatever. You, you've been says, very loyal to him. That is what. Hmm. You know, for me, uh, Kibe Mia was born a loyal person. I was born a loyal person, and loyalty is royalty, and loyalty should always be rewarded in, in, in should always be rewarded in installments. This loyalty should always be punished instantly. Mm -hmm. But the loyalty that I'm talking about is the loyalty that is inborn. That I need to be loyal to Baba because it is his ideologies that I ever believed in. It is him that I saw as my leader. Today I cannot tell a person that Baba is no longer good to me or Baba is this or that. Because he's my leader. He's, I believed in him. People will ask me what, what happened, what changed. And that is not me. So irrespective of anything, he's still my leader. I still support him. And I want him to, uh, to lead us to the time that he feels that is best for him. And therefore I cannot talk about leading any revolution, doing anything, if my boss has not talked about it. Mm. So the political direction of Babo Wino is going to be influenced heavily by Baba. There's a lot that can uh, happen in that, but although God has a plan for everybody, mm. God knows that uh, this is how I want this person to be, this is how his politics will be, and at what specific stage or level. So with that in mind, Baba being there is just but a bridge, is a bridge. To my political future in case there is no bridge then we can always jump over the bridge <laughs> but baba is the bridge hey, you guys yeah. I, I i would wish to have soldiers like you <laughs> imagine if you have somebody that dedicated you're only 35 yes only 35 you're getting white hair already this is nobility <laughs> this, this is nobility. nobility this is noble and these are the ashes of the many wars have fought and won. <laughs> so, <laughs> and in my culture, <laughs> white hair means wealth. Wealth in education, wealth everywhere, wealth in mind, wealth in health. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> so, was like, um, which, which has been your biggest challenge? We've, we know many challenges, and I, mm -hmm. and I, I want you to, to be the one to, to take us there. Which has been your, your biggest challenge so I far? I think I have no big challenge in life because. Uh, if animals experience challenges, what about human beings? So a challenge has a solution. A problem has no solution. So if you experience any challenge, it's a stepping stone. And the Bible says that if you persevere, brings endurance. So all these challenges bring the best in you the best character in you, the best of who you are. If you are going through something, go through it, agree to go through it until the end because it will bring the best out of you. It will sh reveal who you are and it will show people what kind of a person you are. And they say tough times. Create uh, weak, weak boys. Oh. Tough men. <laughs> create tough men. <laughs> yeah, I, I, tough fathers create uh, tough times soft times which yes. create soft but tough, tough men, tough times create tough people. Yes. So all in all, any challenge, you embrace it. You have, to, you have to go through it because that is what we must go through. Every time there is no single day because life is vanity. The reason why life is vanity and vanity is vanity. And as expressed in Ecclesiastes 3, there's a time and a season for everything. There's a time that you are dancing and a time that you are morning, a time that you are crying and a time that you are laughing, a time that you are experiencing a challenge and a time that you are free. But there is no ever, there is no any single time, Kibe, you will find that you are a free man, you are enjoying everything. One, if your financial life is okay, you will find that your health or political life or something is not okay. If all these are okay, you will find that something else is not okay. So at any specific time, otherwise we would be God. If everything is okay, it would be God. But because also God wants us to know that it is through him that we, that we gain, that we benefit, that it is only through him that we are, then there must be a challenge for us to go back to God and seek and ask. You shall be given. If you ask, 
you shall be given. If you seek, you shall find. And if you knock, the door shall be opened, says the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. So our responsibility is, is to go back to God whenever there's a challenge and kneel before God so that you can stand before any man and tell him that I have this challenge, help me solve this. And that you will know that after solving it, it is not you who has solved it, it is God who has solved it. So it is very, very important to have challenges in life. <laughs> so, you've done karate also? Or? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> in how, karate, how, how is your life so short and so rich? Because you, you became a member of parliament before you got to the age of 30, right? Yes. You know, uh, at the age of around 32, mm. we're even late, Kibe. Me and you, we are very late. Look at, uh, look at, uh, at 28, Gaddafi was a president. At 32, Fidel Castro was a president. At another 27 years, Jim Kim, uh, Jim, John, John Kim, John? Kim, 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 yeah, Kim yeah, yeah. North Korea was already a leader. Mm. At, uh, at, uh, at 30s, early 30s, we have uh, Alexander the Great almost conquering the whole world. Jesus Christ at 32 did everything. So we are late. At 35, I'm late. Whatever I should be doing right now should be going globally and transforming lives for the best. So as things are, we are late. And again, a human being can, can be so much, can do so much because of the power of the brain. If you limit your brain to certain things, that is the far that your brain can go. But if you expand your brain to certain limit, that is also how far it can go. For me, it is about life, it is about enjoying life. I want to know that what is it in the world of uh, karate, in terms of uh, physical fitness, in terms of self-defense, in terms of... So, <laughs> you know, the way we, we talk a lot up in Upigwe coffee uko kwa Unaona hiyo. So you must also be in a position that, okay, in such an eventuality, what can happen? Aya, leave that alone in terms of physical fitness because the health-wise, the health part of it, it's also very healthy to do that. And games, and I'm very sure after this show, I also want to have one chess game with you. Now, on a chess, you can play. Chess, chess, always in your house. Apo, da, 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 tuone venye, tutapanga kazi, mta kuwasha clean. Always in your house. Iyo, that's just... Uh, <laughs> Right, so so let, let's do one one last uh, one last thing. Yes. I know it's um, I I didn't know how to ask it, right? Yes. But it's the elephant in the room. Yes. yes. Right? Are you comfortable talking about uh, DJ Bob? Yeah, I can talk about it. Mm. I can talk about it. I might not go so deep into it because of the matter being in uh, court, mm -hmm. and the matter before court of law is sub mm -hmm. it should not be discussed outside okay. because otherwise uh, they may presume that I'm, I'm prosecuting mm -hmm. this matter out of the court. So it, my, my, I will be talking as my hands are tied a little bit. Okay, so it's just, uh, it's just, um, so you, you stop drinking? I stopped drinking, I stopped smoking, I stopped sniffing, I used to do everything. Oh, you used to Every, do coke as well? Yes, I used to do everything. Me, I've been in that world, I know it. Mm -hmm. If you are doing it, I know it. And uh, am I, I doing it? If I, I'm asking you if you're doing it. <laughs> no, do you think I'm doing it? I don't know. I don't Come know. on, take a while, guess. Take a while, guess. I, I, I will not prosecute. <laughs> I think, I think, you, I think you are testing it. You are not doing it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, if you're doing it, I can't judge you because I've been there. Mm -hmm. If you're in alcohol, I can't judge that uh, alcoholic because I've been there. Mm. If you are addicted to, if somebody is addicted to bang, I can't judge that person because I've been there mm. and I know what it is to be there. Mm. And therefore, I can only offer proper uh, advice. And uh, there, of course, there are pros and cons of every drug. And uh, more, more cons. There are more demerits than, uh, than, than, the, than the pros mm. in these drugs because eventually they get to destroy your life, they, they get to destroy your organs. Like Coke is the only drug that destroys all body parts and organs. Mm -hmm. It destroys and within a short period of time, somebody is done. Uh, something like uh, bang, when it is, uh, when it is uh, utilized well for medicinal purposes, mm -hmm. for example, treatment of the cancerous cells, all that, but, but consumed with the prescription, within the prescription of the doctor. 
not 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 abusing it okay of course too much of something is dangerous even ugali ukikula sana tumbo itapasuka yeah when you come to alcohol also so people are also changed differently there are people who are suffering because of drugs they don't know how to use drugs uh, I, i hadn't reached the point of addiction but i was headed there so my, my my brother when when you tell when somebody tells me that they are they are doing that shit i know that it's something that is going to mess them up very soon when somebody is telling me that they are in alcohol i know that alcohol is just for the moment maybe you are just forgetting your worries and challenges and just you say that you want to celebrate and the only easiest way to celebrate probably is by taking alcohol you feel high it is for the moment when you wake up in the morning <laughs> you feel like the hang even that you have the headache all that is a lot of pressure and meanwhile a person who's not drinking had woken up at 6 am okay 5 am 6 am you you wake up at 10 am so this person is 5 hours ahead of you is is really functioning proper as compared to the person who is engaged in this but i don't judge anybody because i've been there if 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 your damascus moment hasn't reached then it is still okay because also jesus turned uh, water into wine mm. so that people could enjoy but i just say that people do it responsibly i'm not in, in moderation though. in moderation mm. i'm not castigating it but things like coke should be out that should be zero alcohol you can consume in moderation ban as per the pres- prescription of the doctor or in moderation mm. but cocaine out my brother it, that it thing over. will destroy anybody who's taking it so mm. you see people are dying every other day unaskia my our age mates they are going unaskia mtu ali sije ali od overdose nini wanakufa so that was your damascus moment so a damascus moment will always reach i want to i don't want to even go into details because no, 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 of the don't, don't, yes. matter but all in all i made a decision that there's a time and a season for everything a time to drink and a time to stop drinking a time to sniff and a time to stop sniffing a time to smoke and a time to stop smoking and uh, that was the time that i left everything from 2020 january to date i've never even touched a glass of alcohol you been I've, clean i've been clean but i don't judge anybody drinking how does it feel do you feel better do you feel more energetic i feel that i i don't miss anything mm. i don't miss anything i'm just okay are you clearer in mind now the very clear? very mental fal- faculties on top mm-hmm. is at optimum the gradient of my brain now is at optimum are you more productive now very very productive uh-huh. very very productive so people even think that you see even in families kibe people also take drugs to think that they can make them even perform better mm. in uh, in bed there are those like bang that here and there mm. but you see you perform way better mm. when you are sober because you know what you are dealing with mm. but the other one <laughs> you don't know <laughs> where you are entering you may <laughs> enter the wrong place <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay there's there that yeah I, I made a mistake so in terms of decision twice, making yeah. in terms of decision making you make proper decisions you make very clear uh, your judgment is very very clear yes you can't be 100% even when you are sober you can still make poor decisions like the president you see he's sober but making very poor decisions so you can still make that but all in all having been transformed from that life to this life everything is proper And that, that is so cool to hear yeah. that uh, you, you can be almost open with it and um, I, I do wish you the best in that sector yeah we, we almost lost a good one in you <laughs> yeah. yeah because uh, because I, I, I want I want a you there yes, yes yes I want a you there so that we can always get to hear the other side of the story yes yeah because like now no, nobody ever thought that Uhuru could have helped Ruto, you don't know that. Well, so we, we, we sat for a minute and we said, wait a minute, Mr. Kantankaras is telling us what. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you my brother. Uh, if uh, if um, Ruto died with Uhuru in 2002. Okay? Against all odds when Moi was being chased from this country. Yeah. Ruto died with Uhuru in 2002. Ruto died with Uhuru in 2013. Ruto and Uhuru were taken to ICC together International Criminal Court. Ruto and Uhuru, Ruto died with Uhuru in 2017. So Ruto did everything to or for Uhuru. 
So what is it? So in other words, Uhuru or Druto. But we didn't, we didn't, we, what, what is it that we, 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 we owed Uhuru? Nothing. But uh, Raila and Ruto were in the same camp in 206, 207. Exactly. But you see, there were opponents in 2022. 20, One didn't want the support of the other. In 2022, there were opponents. So therefore, a decision had to be made. But you see, in all this time, Ruto was with Uhuru. Okay? And so you think, you think these two guys played us? That was a high-level high game, my brother. High level, Graham. It needs an intellectual like me and you to see through it. But others cannot see. You, you see. Kila siku na dudanganya apati wanachoma shamba ya uru. Walichoma nini? Nyasi. What lost them? Wakati kwa mbuzi, nini? Sasa hiyo mbuzi. Mbona, usha ona mwizi. Mwizi hapa Nairobi anarudisha nini? Kondao na mbuzi. Mwizi ya meiba anarudisha. Hakuna. Hakuna. Hizo ni mahote ya, hizo ndio zile hote ya na zenye tulikuwa tunambiwa Supreme Court. Sasa, <laughs> sasa, lakini they were threatened with witchcraft and shit. You know, Bwana, the kuyus came out and said, mwizi, thai, thai. Mwizi know. witchcraft I'm stui. Mwizi. Mm. Ya naiba kwanza witchcraft badai. Siye pia naeza nda kwa mganga. <laughs> After selling that, anapelekea. Anapelekea mganga, mganga protect me. Anapelekea protect me. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that, 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 that is so cool. So, so you, you totally don't... So who are we supposed to believe when we get the message? Who, who do you think right now is a believable leader? Like we have Babu Owino. Okay, we can say Babu Owino. We shall believe, let's say, 70% of what you say. 30% is, is ODM, Luo, Baba. <laughs> yes. Okay? 70% is what Babu yes. really means. Okay? Who else is there? Do you think David D is one of them? You know, D is a very honest man because he tells you the way things are. If things are not working, D says they are not working. Mm. That is a person who should be believed because he's honest. Mm. He's saying it is not working. Why are you putting hope in this? It might be coming out as a bitter pill to swallow. But, but it, it, the truth yes. is the truth. And he tells you that Kenyans, you are eating fruits of, of a poison tree. Therefore, the tree should be cut down. And the poison tree is who? The president. So Kenyans are invested in, a, in fruits of a poison tree. You can't eat that tree, those fruits, you'll die. So he tells you that you believe him. But there are also those good leaders in this nation, both, both in Kenya Kwanza and in Azimio. There are those leaders who are delivering in Kenya Kwanza, people like uh, Ndindinyoro. He's working for his people. Mm. So give it to him because he's been delivering and we are seeing. Mm -hmm. There are leaders like Babu Owino. They are working. Give it to him. My, the person that I'm fighting is the president for the wrong choices and wrong decisions. Wrong choices, poor execution, fatal results. President. God damn. All right. Uh, how long do you think we have before we get to this revolution point? I want to, I want to know exactly when so that I can leave. So I, I can be, I can <laughs> be can watching from, from, <laughs> from Rwanda. I'm like, hey, look at these guys ah. fighting. You guys, come on. It, it how, how, much, how much longer do you think Kenyans can stay in this uh, state of limbo that you, you keep I telling us? I can't today? give the exact timing for that. Mm. Because, because, because it must break at some When is the dam breaking? I can't give the exact timing for that because uh, for such things to be implemented, okay, of course in Kenya we have different types of revolution revolutions. We have agrarian revolution where we can revolutionize the agricultural sector. We have the industrial revolution. We have revolution of the stomach where people are very hungry. Mm. And then we have political revolutions. So we might decide which, which revolution will be best for us to take. And that is what we will execute. That's a very diplomatic answer. <laughs> Spoken like a true lawyer. Uh, I was trying to put you in a position there, but you, <laughs> you, 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 you are able to, to wiggle yourself out of it. Uh, so do you find yourself having to be very diplomatic when you're answering? Because anything you say can and will be used against you, right? It doesn't matter what is used against me. So long as my mind is clear on what I believe in. I don't have to do something to please somebody. Whatever I do, I do it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Even if they are used against you, what is the worst they can do? Nowadays, uh, in, uh, suppose you are gotten with the worst offense ever. 
there is no termination of life. And even if there's termination of life, everybody's going to die by age. As age comes, you grow weaker and weaker and weaker, and everybody's going to die. So death is, not, is nothing to fear. Number two, why do you need to fear prison? Prison is a rehabilitation center. You get free food, free security, you get... But, yeah, but, but everything but, is free. But but by now yeah, you free are free accommodation. Are, eh? Babu, you are uh, unarrestable. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. one, uh, sorry, I keep saying one last thing. You're a very interesting guest. What do you think about cancel culture? The cancel culture. Cancel. Cancel culture. So there's this culture where we all go on social media, oh. we come and say, you know, Babu, we know is this, and we all hashtag, and we are trying to destroy you. We come and say, Babu, we know should not oh, be given can votes. <laughs> Ca cancel culture. You see, my brother. It's picking up steam here. Like the other day, you saw they they got Shafiwero fired from. Let me uh, tell you something. From his job, and we didn't hear any of you guys say anything. Let me tell you something. Yeah. There was a debate of a person called uh, Lon Fuller mm. and Hart mm. about law and morality. That is in uh, jurisprudence. In jurisprudence. And it is clear that what is moral to you is not necessarily moral mm -hmm. to me. For example, if Kibe smokes cigarettes, mm -hmm. Babu might not like it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, to Babu, it is amoral. Or, in simple words, it is not moral to, ba mm -hmm. to Babu. But to Kibe, it is a good thing. Okay? In the United Kingdom, they allow what we call euthanasia, mm. where if you want to die and uh, you can't live anymore and you are sick because of terminal illness, you can say, terminate my life. Mm. It is not allowed in Kenya. So there it could be part of morality, but here it is not moral. So nobody has the yardstick to measure morality. But there is bare minimum mm. that we should not go below. Mm. But the Bible also says that no man, no woman is righteous before the Almighty God. Nobody is righteous. At least one person has fallen short of the glory of the Lord. Mm. And therefore, Babu Wino has no yardstick to judge Kibe on what Kibe is doing. But there is bare minimum, the threshold where we can coexist and we can live and we can say that you don't pass this level. We must reach this level. If you reach here, you can't go beyond that. Just there. So therefore, People are living with a lot of pressure, Kibi. Social media is a medium that has made life easy and has destroyed life at the same time. Where I must go in social media to get approved. Why? Who told you that you need approval of a fellow human being? If God has, a, has, has proven that Kibe is the right person to live, can a human being give you life? But this, this, this cancel culture has teeth. It's, you know, it's not like it doesn't Itambo. matter. Yeah? You it's see, not like Itambo, you it cannot, have teeth. Kibe, you cannot control what a person says about you. But you can control how you take it. So therefore, do not give a person your environment to control. Be the boss of your no, but, environment. But, but, but Babu, that day, they went for Shafiwero and they, they forced the company's hand using uh, this group of... That's this a weak religion. company. That's a weak company. A strong company must know why they employed a person of, Sha of Shafiweru, of Kibe, for that matter. A strong company must know that the reason why I employed this person is because of this and this and this. Mm -hmm. What if today they start making noise about another person? Will, you, will the whole company lose, lose its staff because people are saying that you need to fire this person? No. So those are weak leaders in that company who are making decisions. They must be strong and say, what is the mistake that this person did? Mm. If you talked about Vibaya Juya women, then we warn you, you don't, you don't need to talk about Juya women. But the company must go on. The company must grow because of what? Because of what you wanted to achieve with this person that you brought in. But again, we don't support, we don't support the bear. We don't go below the bear minimum of morality. For example, we've seen what is happening here, the femicide. We don't support that. You can't support it. Any other normal but human it, it, being mm. cannot support that because you consider that it is not proper. But is it? But femicide is not a, a real word, is it? But you see, no, I mean, not according to law. You cannot go to and argue femicide in a court, the courtroom, right? But you see, you cannot argue femicide, but you can argue murder. So murder okay? is murder. Murder is murder, yeah. Yes. So but why, why, see, why give it another name? Then? But you see, the mm. fact that they, there's been consecutive ways of 
killing women in a specific systematic way. And this reminds me of a case of John Mills mm. versus the Republic in the United Kingdom, mm. where a gentleman was killing children in a specific way, in a bathtub, and burying them at the back of the house. Specific way, when this person went, when, when an extra child was killed, this person wasn't seen, but they went for this person, arrested this person, they put him inside. The high court said that this person is guilty of murder. They, then he, he, he appealed. When he appealed, the court of appeal set him free and said that, you know, the fact that a person has always been killed in a specific way does not mean that it is this specific person who went and killed that child in a specific way if you didn't see this person, okay? And he was exempted and excused by what we call the doctrine. <laughs> this is heavy. Mm. Of the contemporaneous similar fact evidence. Contemporaneous. Contemporaneous yeah. similar fact evidence. Mm. Okay? So, in other words, uh, Kibe. But we, we don't, we in don't other have words, a let, me, uh, let me tell you something. There's been a systematic way by which our girls. Icon. There's been a systematic way by which our ladies, our sisters, mm. are being killed in a systematic way. Okay, they are being taken to, they are being taken to Airbnbs. You know, it is, you've agreed, a lady has agreed to come. I'm a kuja. Why, why, do, we, why do you kill this lady again? Let, let me push back Why should you kill this lady again? I'm a shaku patia ata ume, ume. The only thing that I have a problem with, right, is we don't have a serial killer in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Okay, the one you talked about in the UK, that was a serial killer. The one here, there are no serial killers because everybody who has done any crime is being arrested, male or female. But my problem is we shall sit by and watch uh, the NGOs come up with a new term like femicide and it means nothing because a crime is a crime. A crime should be, uh, isn't it the same, should it be homicide or murder? So we deal with that crime at that particular moment? Of course, because will, you cannot you, tell of us. course somebody will be charged with murder. Yes. But all in all, we must agree, you and I, Kibe, we must agree that uh, before we had our mothers, we have our sisters, we have our mothers, we have daughters, we have our wives. So by the end of the day, my brother, you wouldn't want such a thing to befall any close relative of your family. Which thing, Babu? Such a thing of uh, killing in a specific way? No, it's not. You, okay. th th these people are saying it is. But Babu, how many Airbnbs do we have in Kenya? We have several Airbnbs, but the problem... In fact, in fact, so many that right now we are bypassing Airbnb to talk to the owner of the house direct to do the business. Okay? Everybody who is go going into an Airbnb is known by Airbnb the app. But you so see, everybody even, who's going, even, even all, these, all these buildings have CCTV and everything. So the people, all they're going to do is fuck. Now, the, the serial <laughs> killers or the killers mm -hmm. who you guys are saying exist don't because everybody has one murder. Let me tell and you. there are how many? There are only five names the other day when these people went on the streets. Five people. They have at least of five people. Five people is not serial killing. But, but you see, losing one life, Kibe, is not something that we can celebrate about because that one life, you don't know what this person could have uh, changed, transformed to be in life. This person could have changed other lives, could have touched other lives for the positive. But all in all, we can't, we can't support any kind it's of... Some of these were prostitutes, Babu. It doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't so matter. It, it she's, see, a, she's already you see, committing Kibe, a crime. Somebody can be a prostitute. A can body, somebody yeah. can be a prostitute because there is no any other means to survive. We agree, Somebody but can be prostitution a is illegal. It is illegal, yes. just like the same way my mother used to sell changa was illegal, yes. but they raised me through selling changa. So Somebody now, can decide. One, one and you see, but you see, we have for a prostitute to sell herself, it mm. needs another prostitute to mm. come and buy. Yes. Okay, so it is willing buyer, willing, willing seller. seller. We are, if it we is agree. willing buyer, willing seller, yes. then there is what we call the private morality. That what you do behind the curtains, in closed doors yes. should not affect the public morality. Okay? But, I mean, if today a uh, coast bus is traveling from here to Mombasa and they get an accident and 10 people die, we're not shutting down coast bus, are we? Definitely. Unless, unless 
we are able to establish negligence. The, the problem, yes, now, yeah, yeah. now that now. So now we have to in. come. Up, we have to create a you code of conduct we were being between, between prostitutes and uh, the buyers, and say this is a code of conduct. From between now and then, when you guys are buying sex, this is how you buy it. When you because it's about, happening anyway. When you talk about an example of the cost bus and negligence, if we notice that cost bus, the cost buses are having a specific electrical problem. Mm. Even let's talk even about the uh, 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 the planes, or even that cost buses that they are causing accidents and people are dying. And then should be investigating that should be investigated that what are the causes of this deaths and in uh, and in and in these deaths there was a co there's there's an interesting case that we were learning in law of a person called donohue versus stevenson mm. now this person went to drink beer then in a bar when he opened the beer and drank the remains of snails mm. he drank also the remains of he noticed that there were remains of snails in the bottle and therefore the issue of negligence came and when the issue of negligence came this person had to be paid because the, the other person, the owner of the bar, owed this person the duty of care. Mm. Okay? Otherwise, they will be vicariously liable in tort for the offenses committed already. Mm -hmm. Now, back home, if we, if umekatia dem kibe, dem amekubali. Now, the fact that dem ametoka kwa club na wewe, akaingia na wewe kwa room, mm. alikuwa nataka kupatie. Mm. Otherwise, angekata, eh, aende, sindio? So, akikuja akikupatia. Na umesha kula, <laughs> unamaliza kwa nini. So, mwache ukule tena kesho. Unamaliza kwa nini. Ba, babu, you're, you're an actualist. Mwache ukule kesho, babu, amekosa babu, nini. Babu, he, he is it. <laughs> Wee ni msue, umesoma ume mbaka statistics. Yes. In, uh, that's what actually is, right? You guys yes. are able to look at situations. Yes, and risk management. Thank you. Yes. With the numbers, with the numbers that we are doing Airbnb every day. Uh, we as single men uh, don't do Airbnb. Married people uh, like you guys are answer <laughs> no, no, who, no. who do Airbnb. <laughs> but with the numbers that we are doing Airbnb. <laughs> with the draw, you uh, uh, No, I mean, it's, 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 everybody knows uh, Airbnb is for married people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, <laughs> for prostitutes. With that okay? Past, okay. I mean, no, not you, Babu. Babu, you're a reformed man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I used yeah. to do it many years back. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not discussing you here. But with those numbers, statistically, there is an agreeable amount of risk. There is an agreeable amount that today, if 10,000 people are driving on the roads, if we have 20 accidents, we can say that's an agreeable amount. Mm -hmm. We agree this is not too bad. If you have a thousand, then we have to look at that thousand and say, hey, what's going on here? Okay? So even in business, there's a risk. And the risk here, and the business here is prostitution. Because the people who are not doing <laughs> prostitution... <laughs> no, I'm just Why did they hash it up quickly? Because but they, they, they realized that she was doing prostitution. You, you can't rush to that, Kibe. But I so think, if we uh, cannot rush, why, think, what are we doing on the streets? Let, let me tell you something. Uh. We cannot rush and make a, a, a conclusion that what she was doing was prostitution. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. You know, so my, my argument you know, was... We, also, we uh. also talk about higher risks, higher rewards, right? Mm -hmm. Now, somebody assume that now you're in the shoes of the lady... You've been talking to this person. He's been friendly. There's nothing, there's no signs shown that he's a bad person. He comes, he's very good, he's well-groomed, he talks well, he's well-behaved. Because by the time that you are living with this person from the club to the Airbnb, which means that this person was well-behaved. If he wasn't well-behaved, you'd have left. Probably, or if there were signs of violence, you'd have left. Then this person calls you, you come, buys food, buys drinks for that matter, and even the lady can buy. There's no problem with that. And then in addition to that, you agree, you leave a club, you are going with this person to a specific destination. Mm -hmm. You see, that trend alone shows you that the risk is, could be there, but very minimal. Okay? So you cannot predict because you haven't seen this person being rogue in your presence. And you haven't had 
of any stories corroborating that this person had done something before if it if, if, if it if it hasn't been aired anywhere mm. or told to you by any person for that matter was experienced such such a such a thing therefore you go with this person you reach the room okay wherever you are going probably you've, li you've lied that that is your house or airbnb for that matter then reaching there you agree you consent you have sex according to what was being reported that probably there was used condom which means that sex occurred first after having sex you kill this person which means that the murderer is mental there's something wrong with this person because why bring this person have sex so then kill so, this person so at that point babu and i want so to this person has mental I, I, I want you to think like a lawyer yes at that point we've not we don't know what happened between the two of them the only thing that we know is that they were in such agreement that they were seen at the lift laughing, walking into the room because there's CCTV footage of all these murders. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we don't know what happened because they both went in there. Nobody was coerced. You can see this is people, these are people walking yes, in the room. Yes, consensual. Consensual. Yes. So we don't know what happened in there. So why are we in the streets? Because right now you're telling me we don't know what happened. We can only assume. But and anyway, Babu, uh, if the, a fight breaks out between a woman and I, Chances are I'm going to win that fight. It doesn't matter which woman it is. Because you are strong, right? Yeah, so if it doesn't matter, how, it doesn't matter how the fight started. Yes. I'm going to finish it. Yes, but you see, but you see, going to the level of killing this woman. We're not even there yet. We're just saying yes. there are only five names on the billboards when these people went to the streets and the investigations haven't been concluded. But you see, uh, yeah. So there's nobody who's been convicted. You see, of course. But you see, Kibe, there is that idea of being placed at the scene of crime. Okay and being with this person. The fact that you are the scene of crime, now the burden of proof still rests with the prosecution, yes, but the fact that you are the only person who was there and this person died, by the time you are leaving and CCTV showing that you are leaving and you are still there, you are the, at the scene of crime. Yes. So being there, you've been placed there, which means that you are the first suspect, you are still called a suspect. Yes. So when you go to court and the case is done, could prosecution need to prove their case. When it is found that you've been, you are guilty, then now, you, your name changes to a different thing altogether because there's that guilt. That is why there's that court process. But before that, is it not better to prevent than to cure? Because prevention is better than cure. If we see a lady going to Airbnb being killed after sex, another one goes, another one, another one, then the five, they all go to Airbnb and they're all killed. Honestly speaking, what is the probability that a sixth girl is going to be killed in the same way? So but if it's not it is by the not, same person. If it is, mm. Of course, mm. by a different person. But you see, but you see, if, if it is not condemned, so why then not, somebody so in their why, right why state not, of mind, why not, somebody uh, in their right state of mind might think that you see we can do this and go scot free with it. You see, so such things can even happen with, with the bare minimal of an argument. Okay? So to to prevent and not to cure. So it was very important. Why, why, why not prevent it the right way? It was very and, important. And, and you guys should all, all, always, and this is now you as a member of parliament, you should protect the society. You should never let one group of people go for another. Because the messaging right now is teach your son. You okay, see. so b b b Babu, hold up, hold up. Uh, yes. Listen to me. Yes. The messaging right now is teach your son. Teach your son not to kill us. Who's the message from and who's the message you to? See, you see, Kibe, mm. from time immemorial, from way back, you know how things are. A man is physically stronger than a woman. So going no, Not in America, though. So physically. In America, they don't, because they don't know what a man or a woman are. Yeah, we is. have rights. We have rights. Even mm. women have their rights. But when we talk about what you see, what you and I see, mm. you see that uh, Kibe is stronger than this lady, right? Because... The way a woman is created, not with the same physique as the way a man is created. Mm -hmm. Therefore, and that's why even the Bible advocates that it is a man to go and toil and moil and work and provide. Okay, A woman can also provide. There's no problem with that. But the work of a man is provision. That is very important. But Kibe, coming back home, I don't want to support anything to do with killing of any woman. Okay? Mm -hmm. At the same time, I cannot support the killing of any man. Okay? 
but in the same ratio and in the same breadth that women are condemning the killing of women in the same way people always condemn ukisikia hapa hata venye unasikia watu wanaingizwa kwa septic tank okay people always talk about it and say that you know we don't need to kill you don't need to kill your husband you don't need you don't need to kill your man it has been happening it's only that this other one went on the streets the other one probably there were no men who were bold enough to go on the street to start demonstrating against it because probably <laughs> you and I to go busy sana sa zingine uko job huku you don't prefer going there but you see this one raised and you see an eye an eye for an eye makes the whole world go blind if we say that okay now you are doing this let us now do this in revenge the whole world will be blind everybody will be destroyed a shoulder for a shoulder everybody will have no hands so by the end of the day i will not support the fact that women were being killed and a woman is being killed i have daughters i have women in my life so by the end of the day i cannot go that direction i would just i would rather keep off and and say that we need to respect the women in our lives if there's a woman in your life go with her if you if you consent you are grown up adults so long as usipate mtoto na mme usipate usi defile na usi rape na umekubaliana kama kazi imekushinda do you need to kill hapana babu babu i don't want i want us to close this i want to give you a chance to to close this i know i've taken too much of your time and we can agree that you have to give me the diplomatic answer <laughs> that we can agree to on, on that right mm -hmm. and uh, I, i would want you to, to to close it out with the nice vibes mm -hmm. okay so tell us what what message do you have for us are you going for governorship are you going for presidency where where what are we going to expect are we looking at 10 years into a babu presidency is that something that you dream about or definitely kibe everybody has a dream and i said too much ambition destroy the man however too little takes him nowhere but uh, but i i tend to believe that uh, as babu we know i also have dreams i have a vision and i have a vision to transform the lives of kenyans a vision and a mission to ensure that that child in the slum in the village goes to school a vision to ensure that that mama mboga at least graduates into having a supermarket a vision and a mission to ensure that that border border rider gets somewhere in life and to ensure that at least babu delivers what he promised the people of Mbakasi's constituency as per the oral contract that we had and i also have a dream and a vision that one day as babu we know god willing i will also be a leader in this nation in the highest office ever mm -hmm. because i know that those that we are we are with in this level not even boasting mm. there is nobody who, clo who can come close to me in terms of everything you're way ahead of the pack in terms of leadership uh -huh. in terms of brains in terms of age in terms of everything mm -hmm. i think i'm 10 years ahead of all of them so what what will make somebody think that babu cannot lead this nation for the betterment of the rest So it's something that we leave it in the hands of the almighty God again. Man, I am really happy to <laughs> what, a, what a transformation of a man man. We have we have seen you blossom right in front of us and it is such a privilege for me to have hosted you today man. Thank, thank you for accepting to sit with me for two how long was, did you do it? Almost two hours, right? Two hours. Eh? Yeah, through this blackout <laughs> and through everything and you've been very gracious about it. I appreciate your time here. Yeah, I'm so happy. Yeah. And uh, Kibe, you are also amazing, uh, very unique person and different in person also. <laughs> Just oh, yeah, probably, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm very calm, collected, intellectual. Inter I don't know. I've never, what been, I've never been accused of being intellectual. No, you are. You are. You are. You are an intellectual. So I, I definitely, like, like listen, definitely, my interaction with you on a one-on-one -on -one is top. Sometimes tunasikia mambo ina ina inachemka huko ndani nasema is this the same kid? Thank you very much man. Thank, yes. thank you. But uh -huh. yeah. Uh, maybe I'm not fucking thought about the Africa. Uh, oh yeah 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 man mm. man. So so th thank you to the producer here Jeff. It reminded me I, I I want to send you with a message. Yes. To all your parliamentary and friends and everything. So when I was in the states I started this thing 
this company called Africa. You can see the, the branding behind us. Uh, mm -hmm. So it is a, a content sharing platform that I want to introduce you to. I'll give you a hoodie yes. and uh, a kofia that you, mu you must wear proudly yes, in Ambakasi yes, East. Yes, and when yes, they ask you, what is this? We say it's Africa. It's the first platform, uh, content sharing platform that of its level. Yes. You see how you're saying there's nobody on your level? Yes. When it comes to content creation, there's nobody on Ukotop. my level. <laughs> okay? Yes. So I know what content creation is. Yes. And um, when I was kicked out of YouTube, I was, um, when I was cancelled, I was cancelled by the, you don't know that. There's a, there was a cancelling of mine in September. <laughs> yeah? And everybody went against me. And they said all this bullshit. But then I had already started working on the, on the content sharing platform, which is Africa. Okay? So it's Africa.com. And I would want at least next time you're standing in Parliament and people are talking about TikTok and YouTube and how they cannot monetize, then I want you to throw in the name the Africa somewhere there. Actually, Kibe, this is a, a, an idea whose time has come. Yeah. And uh, it is genius. Why? It reminds me of uh, Trump. And Trump, by the way, is going to be the next president. Hands of the down, bro. I'm so excited about that, yeah. And that's a genius. Uh -huh. And uh, that's what I think uh, and I know, having had serious conversations with you, you are. Because Trump did not stop at the fact that he was banned from Twitter. He started his own handle. Mm -hmm. It's now doing well. He's refused to come back on Twitter. Mm -hmm. But by the end of the day, it's doing well. This, this is a great opportunity. An opportunity that is already providing jobs because I can see the young men and women that, yeah. you are, that, you have, that you've employed here so far, just because of your Africa. And it's high time also we must think about ourselves as Africans. We don't want new con colonialism every other time, new colonization mm -hmm. every other time. We want something that can be associ associated with us. Africa has a total of around 1.5 billion people, 1.4 to 1.5 billion people. That's free market where we can utilize mm -hmm. instead of just pleasing the whites all the times. So I think, uh, Hibe, this is, an, this is an amazing opportunity. It is a great opportunity, and I'm going to join it also. Thank you, Mahesh. Thank you for that endorsement. I appreciate that. Yeah. That is better than any other endorsement. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to commit too much. But yeah, thank you, Mahesh. Thank you for coming through. I appreciate your time, and uh, I'm, I'm very pleased that you are my first member of parliament. <laughs> right? Imagine that. I'm pleased that this is how yeah. I, I started. Yeah. No, it's uh, big. Yeah. It I'm is. very happy yeah. and I'm very, very optimistic about uh, the future. Even for you. Yeah. I see your team and yes. I can tell your team is very dedicated. Yes. I was asking fellow how long have you known each other? Yes. Then he went back in high school. Yeah, it's high school and I'm like, University and you guys yeah. are still friends? Yeah. <laughs> because you know us, we, every stage you drop the friends and yes. get new friends. But the yes. fact that you have such friends for all this time yes. is really impressive and I, I do wish you all the best. Thank Th you. So thank you guys, thank you for joining us. Uh, till next time.